Before I talk about this week's Raw, this slammy edition of Raw, if you haven't done so already, do yourself a favor and check out my Holiday Humbug series. The link to the playlist will be put right here once I get to it. And I'll put all that information in the description box as well. It's been a fun series for me to do. A lot of different videos that I'm sure those of you that haven't watched already might actually enjoy the discussion on. Now, let's get to the business at hand of Monday Night Raw this week. The slammy edition for this go-home show before TLC 2013. Um, cautions, a couple of cautions here. Number one. At some point in time, the volume of my voice may escalate just a little bit. So as a result, be forewarned. Don't be like, why are you yelling and screaming for you? Ay, ay, ay. My headphones, my ears are hurting. Well, I've told you before, so if you need to adjust your volume, do it now. Do it now. The next thing is that I think it's really stupid to have the Slammy Awards as the go-home show before your last pay-per-view of 2013. I'm all for the Slammy Awards show. I'm all for having fun with professional wrestling. God knows that. But it seems to be a great conflict of interest between trying to build up towards a pay-per-view and having fun with the Slammy Awards. You know, why can't this be the last Raw of the year? Why can't you have this be the Christmas edition? Or whatever the case might be. Why did it have to be placed right here as the go-home show before TLC. I really think that's incredibly stupid on the WWE's part. Why not just do it the night after TLC? Because you've got quite a period of time before the Royal Rumble. You know, you've got the blowback off of TLC, yes. But it's a better time, I think, to step back and have some fun and reflect on 2013. Because, frankly, you're doing some of these awards here, and you haven't even factored in the last pay-per-view of the year. I just think this is incredibly ridiculous and stupid. And I thought this show this week, in general, was kind of ridiculous and stupid. So, my other caution being, of course, is that I know a lot of you already have your flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the go position. You're saying, flame on! How dare you, Schlangetti! This Raw Slammy Edition was one of the best motherfucking shows of 2013! And that finish to this show was one of the greatest of all fucking time! I know I'm going to get a lot of that. And go ahead, that's fine. This is just one, well, not so humble opinion about why I thought Raw sucked this week, frankly. All right, so before, before I talk about the actual show, and let's face it, there really is no point talking about a lot of the other parts of the show. I'm just going to really only talk about the last 20 minutes or so. But before I do, I'm going to give you some of my award winners, my Schleggy award winners in the WWE for 2013. Let's start off with the beard of 2013. Now, technically, a lot of you will say Daniel Bryan deserves that award. I think Randall Keith Orton does for his construction worker beard. That thing is impressive. It's impressive in the fact that it's kind of a beard and it's kind of not. It's kind of there where you can see it and kind of not. It's very, like, ambiguous. You're not really sure what to make out of it. That's the beard of 2013, ladies and gentlemen. Your breakout star of 2013, the kosher butcher, and I don't even think it's close. The Shield and the Wyatt family can suck a dick. It's all about the kosher butcher, damn it. The moment of the year for me personally was seeing something that I wasn't sure was ever going to happen, and that's Bruno San Martino being inducted into the 2013 WWE Hall of Fame class. That, to me was the moment of the year because I truly never thought. Even Mr. Bob Backlund, I assume, Sunday was going to go in. But I was never sure during his lifetime if Bruno San Martino was going to take his rightful place in the WWE Hall of Fame. That still, to me, resonates as the moment of the year. The hashtag of the year? Hashtag WWE porn names. Oh, hashtag believe in the shield. Ah, I eat shit. Hashtag WWE porn names is by far, by far... The best hashtag of 2013 is something we should do again next week during Raw. Have some fun with this shit. The LOL funniest moment of the year. This schleggy can only go to one individual or one character. <laughs> Sin Cara. I was at first going to give it to Mystico Sin Cara for, for breaking a finger or two and having the whole match stop. <laughs> no. It's like this character is cursed. It should be sin-cursed. 
<laughs> because you know, now you've got Hoonico portraying it, and he gives ADR a concussion. <laughs> Different people, same character, same botch-filled fucking result. And that has to be the LOL funniest moment of the year. It's just anything and everything pertaining to Sin Cara. <laughs> the character, the fact that this was Triple H's really first big chosen one fighting. <laughs> They're about to re release the original person that portrayed the character, and <laughs> He stopped the match because of his finger got a poo-poo. And now the other Sin Cara being portrayed by Hunika just gave ADR a fucking concussion at the end of their match. Ah. My double cross of the year goes to Mark Henry because there were a lot of people that were sucked into the bullshit that thought he was going to retire and that this was the end of the road. You know, a lot of people were sucked into this. This was true greatness, and I put that in there for Smokey Shirt sure thing, but he would tell you that Mark Henry was a double cross of the year, and if he told you, you wouldn't disagree with him, so I'm going to tell you, so hopefully you won't disagree with me. Uh, the insult of the year to me has to be the fact that the WWE <laughs> continues to try and go against common sense and logic of what the live audience is telling them with Daniel Bryan. No, why would they want the guy to be WWE champion? Why would he have anything to do with the unification match at TLC? Now, put him in a stupid-ass three-on-one handicap match with the Wyatt family. Because <laughs> that's what the people want. That's not the fucking people want. They'll settle for it and they'll be happy. And don't sit there, Deluxeman and everybody else and go, How dare you? The Shield versus CM Punk is awesome, but even more awesome is the Wyatt family versus Daniel Bryan in a three-on-one handicap match. Please, please don't. You know you would trade that in for a fucking second to have Daniel Bryan face either John Cena or Randall Keith Orton here at TLC in a title unification match. Preferably Daniel Bryan versus John Cena. You know you would. That to me is the biggest insult of 2013 is what they've done with Daniel Bryan. The Diva of the Year. You know what's funny is AJ Lee's been a long reigning Divas champion. And she can't even win Diva of the Year. She loses it to the Bellas. <laughs> And so not only the internet, who loves AJ Lee to death, not only did they vote not vote for her to win that female edition of NXT, they can't even pad the ballot box to help her win Diva of the Year. <laughs> the fucking Bellas, get out of here. My Diva of the Year has to be Triple H. Because no matter how much time's pass by and no matter how much shit changes, shit with Triple H remains the same. He's going to be put in a top spot, brother. He's going to be working with top people, brother. Whether that's a couple of matches with Brock Lesnar, whether that's being heavily involved with the WWE Championship feud between Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton, potentially a future match with CM Punk down the road, Triple H to me has to be the Diva of the Year. Outstanding. Match of the Year, Undertaker versus CM Punk. Superstar of the Year, I think it's Daniel Bryan and I hate the way they dismissed it like this was a major upset. No, he was a superstar of the year. And frankly, if anybody else would have won it, it would have been a tremendous upset. So you see what I'm talking about here? It's even when somebody has their moment, like Daniel Bryan wins superstar of the year, and deservably so, and in my opinion, was the only real choice here. Not fucking John Cena. He's had enough of that. It's not CM Punk. It's not Brock Lesnar or anything like this. Daniel Bryan has it. But it's like they're even trying to undercut it and demean it. The WWE is by saying, oh, what a major upset. What a huge surprise. How's that a huge surprise? How's that a major upset? Listen to the fucking crowds every week. They're telling you that in 2013, the superstar of the year was Daniel Bryan. Stop trying to demean it. Start playing it up. Start emphasizing it. Because this is the type of undercut, undercutting, underhanded bullshit that the WWE does to try and undercut anybody that they don't truly want to be a top guy. <clears throat> you could have somebody like Daniel Bryan being positioned to be a top guy, and then if the WWE chooses not to be, get behind that, doesn't want to accept that, doesn't want to have that happen, they'll do everything they fucking can to undercut it, and it's completely ridiculous in my humble opinion. But then we get to this ending of Raw. The one that apparently everybody is all giggly tits about. Oh, here comes the hate. And dear Schleg Daddy, what do you want out of the WWE? What do you want out of professional fucking wrestling? What do you want the company to do? This was awesome. It had great promo work. It had great action and suspense and encompassed so many different fucking things. You know, part of my disappointment with this ending 20 minutes or so overall is the fact that I saw so many people that have been in the business for so long sit there and praise this thing like it's the greatest thing ever. A nation of all fucking people should know better. I can't believe that they're praising this segment like this. 
Now, if you look at it on the surface, you would say, a really good promo by Randy Orton. A really good promo by John Felix Anthony Cena. And then you got all types of fisticuffs and bedlam going on. Oh, you even teased a freaking Cena heel turd. That's what the people are saying. That's what everybody seems to think. Let's get in touch with reality here for just a second. Okay. Keep in mind that you had all of these former WWE and World Heavyweight Champions in the ring to hype up yet another John Cena versus Randy Orton match. Let's get back to reality here. Randy Orton's promo was actually kind of good. One of his better promos I've heard him cut in a long time. John Cena's was nothing special. It's that same type of, oh, come here, Daniel Bryan, let me suck off of your heat from the crowd and let me get it on to me type shit. You could tell he went to the whole Hogan school of how to do business, brother. Because that's what he was doing, and that's why the fucking crowd ended up cheering him. This promo sounded like some phony, baloney, lame-ass bullshit that Cena said I don't know how many umpteen dozen times. I take this more serious than you. I work harder than you. You've been given everything. Because John Cena's been given absolutely nothing during his nine years at the top of the WWE, right? Get the fuck out of here. This, this whole segment to me... You've got the crowd chanting Daniel Bryan, and you might be saying, well, it's in his hometown area of Seattle, da, da, da. And that's partially true. However, Triple H has said before that he doesn't pay attention to people like me. He pays attention to people in the audience, the people that pay, even though people like me do pay to go to these shows, whatever, and we do say these things. So when you're trying to hype up John Cena versus Randy Orton, in a unification match, a match we've seen between these two hundreds of times before, and now we're unifying the titles with very little intrigue into it and very little time invested into this storyline, you've got the crowd fan fucking chanting Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan. That's not a good segment. That's not the reaction you want. The crowd is rebelling against you. The crowd is telling you this is fucking bullshit. The crowd is telling you, we hate this shit. And the crowd is telling you, we're tired of the fucking Breakfast Club. They're telling you that they don't want to see John Cena versus Randy Orton. They want to see Daniel Bryan maybe versus one of these two fucking guys. Or they want to see Daniel Bryan versus somebody else. I know all of you are going to say, oh my god, give me C, I'm fucking give me Dolph Ziggler, be the greatest trouble threat of all fucking time. You know what, it doesn't matter. You guys are right. You should be rebelling against this shit. Because it's the same old nonsensical, lazy-ass WWE bullshit. When in doubt, we're going to go to Cena, and we're going to go to Orton. Because that's been so great for your overall fucking bottom line over the past several years. Right, WWE? Right, WWE? Has it really? Now, I know a lot of you are going to counter and say, well, Schleg Daddy, they added 600,000 viewers compared to last week. And how exactly was last week's show rated? And what was the real rating for this week? Was it all that great? You just sucked less. This whole segment was about Triple H. And one of my favorite things about this, though, I have to admit, was CM Punk. His facials were priceless. When Stephanie's talking about one of the all-time greats is Triple H, and he goes like this, A hey, fucking men! Screw God on this one! The last thing we need to be doing is pumping up Triple fucking H anymore. And instead of giving us Daniel Bryan versus John Cena at TLC, which would be the appropriate unification match, the appropriate match to close out your pay-per-view schedule for 2013, or even if you wanted to say Daniel Bryan versus Randall Keith Orton one more time, and that would be okay too to a degree, you're giving us John Cena versus Randy Orton. And then the whole bedlam of the last few minutes. So instead of focusing on the pay-per-view, now you've got fucking... Triple H and CM Punk going at it. You've got Shawn Michaels super kicking him and Daniel Bryan taking him out. It's like all of a sudden now, maybe you're starting to plant the seeds for WrestleMania. Now you've maybe finally figured out your direction. You're more concerned about trying to plant the seed for Daniel Bryan and Shawn Michaels, Triple H and CM Punk, than you are on focusing between Randy Orton and John Cena. This segment was fucking trash because it represents so many things that are wrong with the WWE today. It represents so many things about how the WWE is out of touch with reality and has lost grip on what the wrestling fan really wants. When you get to the whole climactic part where Stephanie gets knocked down and then Triple H pedigrees Randy Orton because it's always got to be about God, right? Are we forgetting this shit, people? 
Then you've got the camera panning, and there's John Cena standing with the powers that be, the authority. And people are starting to think that John Cena's going to turn heel? He's going to align with the authority? Where the fuck did that come from? And why would the WWE even tease that? That is so not in the realm of possibilities at this point in time, and I base that off of years of fucking history here, that is so out of the realm of possibilities. Who even produces this shit where you would even tease that as a possibility? The fuck is going on here? And I'm supposed to buy that this was a really goddamn good segment? All the while, all the while, when you're teasing this one last big what the fuck moment, the crowd is chanting Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan. When the crowd is chanting something that has nothing to do with the topic at hand, which is the unification match between John Cena and Randy Orton, you might want Daniel Bryan there, but he's not there. He's not involved in the match. He was just there in the ring so John Cena could suck some of the life force out of him from the fucking crowd in Seattle. That's not good. That means you're out of touch with the fucking wrestling audience. And so many fans and so many people in the business. I understand why they got excited about this segment this week. I didn't. I say through the bullshit. I understand what's going on here. The WWE is insulting your intelligence again as wrestling fans. They're trying to tell you that this is what you want. You don't want John Cena versus Randy Orton. Nobody wants this shit. Everybody wants to see Daniel Bryan at the top at this point in time. He's the most over performer in the company right now. Yes, even over a fucking lousy ass John Cena. And they're giving you John Cena versus Randy Orton in a unification match at TLC. Hell no, this segment wasn't any fucking good. Hell no, this Raw wasn't any good. You're having a slammy show as your go-home show before TLC. You've got, what, five announced matches, and only one of the five announced matches is even a TLC match or encompasses tables, ladders, or chairs in any stretch or form? You've got two handicap matches. I didn't realize it was called Handicap TLC. It's called TLC. This show was dumb this week. It's stupid to have the slammies before a pay-per-view, right before. You could have had it right after it been perfectly fine. And then the ending 20 minutes of the show was complete trash. Even when there were a couple of good elements in there. It's everything that it represents. And so many of you, I would think, would know better. I would think so many of you would see through this bullshit. And so many of you, frankly, would be so pissed off and be so indignant beside yourself because the WWE is choosing once again to insult your intelligence. This was not good. All this represented was the breakfast club at the top, even if you say, well, look at all the different shit they encompass, Matt Hardy. Well, listen here, dumb dick. It's still ultimately about the breakfast club. If you're setting the table for Daniel Bryan and Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, that's a big mania payout for Shawn Michaels. If you're setting up Triple H and CM Punk, either the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania, that's Triple H deciding he's going to try and suck some more life force out of another type guy. And another big payday for Triple H. You've got John Cena, you've got Randy Orton already at the top. What's not the fucking get here? Again. This week's Raw just showed me so many things about what's wrong with the WWE in terms of the way they choose to do things, in terms of the way they present things, the way they position things, and the way they continue to try and insult our intelligence as wrestling fans. And it's about high time that a lot of you that know deep down that you're upset about a lot of things, especially things like Daniel Bryan not being at the top when he should be wrestling in this unification match at TLC. It's about how at time you guys see through the bullshit and call out this company on this bullshit because it's only going to get worse in 2014 if you don't. You've got the crowds everywhere are chanting, yes, yes, yes. They're chanting for Daniel Bryan. He's the most over guy in the company. So we're going to allow John Cena to try and take some of his luster away from him, to suck off of it like John Cena does so many times, like I said, straight from the school of Hulk Hogan, brother. And we're going to have John Cena versus Randy Orton at TLC in a, in a feud, in a rivalry that was thrown together very, very quickly and no real reason for it to happen other than just because. That's the WWE today, and that's the WWE that you guys should be rebelling against. The show sucked this week. Accept it. Now we got TLC coming. Oh, boy.